Hi there. Sorry, I had to get offline because the, my voice was not coming through. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Now it should be on. Uh, welcome to Lunch with Hirok, and today's uh, topic is growth hormones and the effects of growth hormones, also known as somatotropin, on your health. Hi, welcome on board. So the first one is psychological effects. There are two types: indirect and direct. The first one is direct. So what happens is when growth hormones are produced, it will latch onto the fat cell and it will help to break down triglycerides. So the, the, this is the number one thing. So if you're not producing, if your body is not producing enough growth hormones, it will not break down triglycerides. This is the number one thing. Second thing, it will prevent the fat cells from accumulating and sucking in free lipids which are floating around inside your bloodstream. All right, so it'll prevent this from happening. Second one, the indirect one. Indirectly, in the presence of growth hormones, all the tissues and your liver and stomach and all that will produce uh, IGFI. Okay, IGFI stands for insulin-like growth factor I hormones. So what it does is it will promote growth of bones. It'll promote growth of muscles. It will promote growth of other areas like uh, you have clearer eyes, you've got longer hair, it will prevent your hair from becoming grey or white. It will it'll do all this kind of stuff, right? Okay, the metabolic effect of having growth hormones is the following. Firstly, it will do protein metabolism. Hi Emily, welcome on board. Thank you for telling me that the microphone was not working. Second one is it will allow your body to metabolize fat. Third one is it'll also help in metabolizing carbohydrates. All right, so first one, metabolizing proteins. How it does it is in the following way. It will do protein synthesis across your entire body, every single part of it. Can you hear? Hearing is okay? Hi, okay. All right, what it does, it, it increases protein synthesis by allowing the uptake of more amino acids. All right, so the more amino acids is coming into your body, the faster you will have growth in your muscles. All right, and it does another one more thing. It prevents the oxidation of proteins. Two, fat metabolization, uh, sorry, fat metabolism. Okay, what it does is in the, in the presence, okay, in the soft. All right, let me see whether I can do this. How about this, much better? I hope so. Much better, right? Much better, much better, much better, okay. So, fat metabolism, how it happens is it utilizes fats and it breaks it down, breaks away the triglycerides and it oxidizes the fat, all right? So, in the presence of growth hormone, fat is oxidized and this will burn away the fats. Much better, all right. And it will utilize the fats and break down triglycerides. So this is what growth hormone will do to fat cells. Carbohydrate metabolism, all right? This is very important. In the presence of growth hormones, it will keep blood sugar level to the normal range, all right? It has the following properties. It has an anti-insulin property. It enhances glucose synthesis in the liver and prevents the fat from accumulating the sugar and and the person becoming fatter however there is one place where it doesn't work properly if you take growth hormone injections all right if you inject yourself with growth hormones it increases insulin in your blood it will lead to too much insulin in the blood so it's no good and the last one, control of growth hormone uh, secretion, right? So growth hormone secretion is controlled by the following factors. A, stress. So the more stress you have, the less growth hormones are produced by your body. Exercise helps to produce growth hormones, but not heavy exercise like um, running a marathon and things like that, no. If you run a marathon, if you run long distances, you're putting a lot of stress to your body. 
it decreases the production of growth hormone. So one of the things that we have come to realize is that if you take a slow walk every single day for 30 minutes, for 45 minutes, for one hour, a slow walk with your husband, your spouse, your children, whatever it is, if you take a slow walk, it produces growth hormones. It's a type of exercise, but it's slow paced. So it doesn't cause your body to have stress. It basically relaxes your body. It keeps your blood circulating a little bit uh, higher. And if you're doing a slightly, what we call a shuffle walk or a slight brisk walk, is good for you, but not a high paced brisk walk and not jogging either. All right, so this will increase growth hormones in the body. Third one is of course nutrition. If you eat cleanly and eat clean food uh, six days a week, it will increase growth hormone production in your body. And lastly is of course sleep. You need to have at least seven to eight hours of sleep every night. If you're not having those sleep, your body is not going to produce growth hormones. So this is all the areas that uh, will happen to your body. So don't forget growth hormone helps to produce IGFI which will prevent your blood your your fat cells from sucking in the lipids inside the fat it's inside the blood stream two it promotes protein synthesis fat metabolism and carbohydrate synthesis and metabolism and lastly there are four factors which will promote growth hormones so if you stick to all this your growth hormone production should be going up so another last thing is if you do intermittent fasting growth hormones will be produced now this is how it works if you do intermittent fasting for 24 hours 24 hours so I covered this a little bit yesterday after you consume food you wait two hours for digestion to complete and after that another two hours so four hours from the time you finish eating your liver will start to detoxify itself. Hi Simon, welcome on board. So at that point, uh, you are basically in detoxification phase, right? So at that, uh, what happens is that after 24 hours, lots of growth hormones start to flood your system, right? Lots of growth hormones start to flood your system. Now for ladies, it's 1,300 international units of growth hormones which will be produced by your body after 24 hours of fasting. And it will continue on to the second day and you will have 300 international units of growth hormones being produced. If you continue on to your third day and you fast on your third day, growth hormone will stop and, you will be, and, and the body will think that you're actually in um, starvation mode and growth hormone will come to a stop and then the body will produce insulin because you are having stress and it will start to accumulate fat all right so this is how it works this is the place where ladies don't like it all right for guys after 24 hours of fasting we produce 2000 international units hi dr dr m welcome on board we produce 2,000 international units of growth hormones. That's why guys tend to bulk up very fast when they're doing intermittent fasting. They tend to have greater synthesis of muscles and things like that. And after another 24 hours, after 48 hours of fasting, guys will have 400 international units of growth hormones. And the same thing as ladies, on the third day of fasting, we basically no longer produce growth hormones and will start to accumulate more fat cells than the ladies. So this is the difference between ladies and guys in terms of growth hormone production. So if you're doing intermittent fasting, just remember 48 hours is your maximum amount of time that you should be doing fasting. If you go beyond that, you need additional help or you have been in ketosis for the last one month you have been on a ketogenic diet. If you are doing that, you need amino acids every morning and you need your vitamins, minerals, potassium, magnesium, and a few of the other uh, complementary vitamins and minerals to keep you going for a time longer than 48 hours without you causing your body to have 
adverse effects like slower metabolism and uh, basically you don't lose fats and things like that all right so be careful if you do more than 20, 48 hours of uh, intermittent fasting chances of you losing muscle mass is very high but if you keep within the two day 48 hour period your muscle synthesis will be much better all right thank you for seeing this and watching this if you found this of uh, benefit to you please share it with your friends and family and have a good day bye bye